Hey guys, as some of you might already know through my Instagram account, I bought some Amazon key fobs. These are all blanks. You can see the keys are not cut. And inside there's no electronics. Uh, the reason I bought them, obviously, obviously usual stuff. These um, key fobs, they break along the holder here. The buttons wear out. And uh, I got around it by drilling a hole through here. You have to be very careful because the chip is in here. You have to be, so you have to be careful where you drill. Otherwise, if the chip breaks, the car is not going to start, uh, even though the key fits. Uh, so this is a workaround, but it's obviously not very aesthetically pleasing, uh, and it's sort of in the way as well on the ignition when it's hanging like this right up front, rather than the keys at the back. So anyways, I got these. Uh, they're like eight dollars a piece. I got four of them. I already replaced one of them. I'm just going to walk you through how I did it. Uh, so this is the old one from the old key. And what I noticed is that the quickest thing would have been is to, just to put this one into the new fob. Uh, that way no coating needs to be done or no key cutting. Uh, but what happens is that when this guy is installed and I push the button, uh, it seems to be binding. It could be that this key here is thicker than this one here. Uh, so I did end up getting it cut, and that's why I have this spare left over. But uh, I'll walk you through it so you can see. So first thing you want to do is you take this thing apart, just pulling it apart. Now you have two halves. Uh, then you can start... Then you can start with this side, doesn't really matter which end you start with. Let's go with the more complicated side. Uh, this is the side with the chip in it, or the pill. When you take this guy apart, it will fly apart, kind of. Uh, not in this case, because I have that ring here. Uh, and this spring here fits only one way. Same with this. Uh, if you happen to screw up, you just fiddle with it until you get it back right again. So you can see the pill is right here, and um, it's glued into place. And you don't want to just pry up on it. What I initially tried was to lift it with a with like a dental pick here, and that didn't work. Uh, so then I took it to the grinder, and I at the shop, and I ground off the sides as, until I got really close to the pill, um, and then just touched it a little bit more, the plastic and it finally popped. So we'll do the same thing. Uh, always wear safety glasses. I'm obviously wearing my uh, my video glasses so I should be okay. And this is the first time using a small Dremel tool. We'll see how that works. pretty good. You can also use side cutters to get rid of the big stuff first, but again you have to be very careful. Let's see if I can manhandle this a little bit. So as soon as you slip you take that chip out, you're gonna need a new one. And then what you do is you just keep going, like I said, until you're really close to the pill. And then it'll slowly lose contact where it's um, glued into place.
is usually just glued at the ends. You can see the pick going through underneath. So once you get to the ends, you will be able to eventually just gently pry it up. Getting close. Hopefully that's just the glue that just came off, not the end of the pill. Okay, now the other side. Okay, there we go. Looks like it's still intact. Try not to overheat it. Um, kind of pay attention as to which way it was sitting. Uh, there is a chrome or copper side and a silver side. Um, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but just in case, put it back the same way. So now that we have it out, let's we continue with the new fob. And clean that mess up later. So actually, I have to take the old one apart still. So you take the key, the old key, and you just wedge it in between here. And that comes apart nicely. Battery we need. And the circuit board should just pop up. And there are these little pins here that are supposed to be flared over to... to uh, flared over the circuit board um, but uh, it should just pop up when you pry up from underneath it there's one side The other side. So then we grab a new key, pull it apart. This time we'll I guess we'll start with the remote side of it things. It only fits one way. You just push it into place. Or it just drops into place. Battery. And we can right away you can see if the buttons work. So 
so that's the unlock, trunk, lock, panic, so that's all working good. This one here, you need a small screwdriver, take the back off. And before I put the new one in, I'm just going to show you what the um, the old lever does, or the old original key. This is a tiny alignment slot for the spring, and then you just work it around until it's seated. Put the top cover on. And you can see when I push it, it sticks. So I'm going to get the key cut as well. Leave this aside for now. Okay, and then with regards to the um, with regards to securing the chip, I uh, decided on just using some kind of a silicone uh, because that way oops so that way the chip will be easier to remove the silicone is basically uh, a glue that's not as strong so just a little bit on either end and then we can drop it into place. Uh, I think it was in this way. The old remote, if you look at the remote here, it has these little three raised edges that push against the pill. The new one does not have this. You can see in this area there's nothing there. So again, uh, a little bit of silicone to hold it in place would be is ideal. And uh, even if it does come loose, uh, worst case, I think it's just going to rattle in there a little bit. I don't think it'll fall right out. Can't really go anywhere once it's all back together. So now put this back together, the same thing here, there's a little spring piece that fits into the head of this you can pretty much feel it sliding into place uh, it's slotted in three places so it also only fits one way the al spring alignment at the base again, I think you can go two turns but I think only one turn is actually really needed. We just have a feel here. That's working pretty good. Put the screw back on. There you go. All you need to do is get the key cut again. Or in your case, if, if the key happens to remain free, uh, it's quicker and cheaper just to reuse the old one. But if it's binding, that's obviously no good. And a locksmith charged me $45 to get it cut. So getting it cut is the most expensive uh, part of this whole operation. Again, the whole this whole fob is $8 on Amazon and uh, plus shipping I think and taxes whatnot but it's still much cheaper than from the dealer direct uh, 100 200 dollars or whatever it is um, okay thanks for watching hope you have good luck with yours